What's up, my name is Michael, I'm a teacher, and this is my reaction to the animated history of Germany, part one and two. I teach history, but I don't claim to be an expert at it. I teach the basics, pretty much. But if you want to make me the coolest teacher in school, you can subscribe. My students would love it. Without further ado, here we go. Germany right. is located right in the center of Europe, between its two largest neighbors, France and Poland. Strap yourselves in for a complicated one. When the Romans arrived in Germany, they found a land inhabited by a melting pot of Celtic and Germanic Putin's peoples. Out. The diversity of the region didn't interest the Romans who called the land west of the Rhine River Gaul and east of the river Germania. The Germanic peoples were really good at fighting the Romans, but the people in these regions lived mostly agrarian lifestyles in independent tribes. These small tribes soon became fewer big tribes. These tribes weren't a nation as such, but a conglomeration of independent smaller states for centuries, which is the reason why there are so many names for the German nation to this day. The Germans expanded further into the weakening Roman Empire. This great migration period eventually became known as the Great Migration Period. <laughs> Historians aren't very creative. One of the tribes called the Franks dominated the region and slowly conquered all of France, Germany, the Low Countries, and parts of Italy under the Merovingian and Carolingian dynasties. Much of this conquest can be attributed to Charlemagne, also known as Charles the Great. Charlemagne's empire became the foundation of the Holy Roman Empire, the symbolic successor to the actual Roman Empire. The empire was split into three kingdoms. E Isn't Charlemagne the dude who eventually entered the uh, British Isles? Educate me. East, West, and Middle Francia. East Francia eventually came under the control. Borders were a mess back then. Every like 50 years or so, everything changed. You have to redo the map. I'm not sure they had maps back then, but yeah. Control of Otto of Saxony, who married into the Italian kingdom, leading the Pope to revive the Holy Roman Empire. Establishment of the state became one of the many precursors for the division of the Catholic and Orthodox Church, the latter of which was still firmly controlled by the Eastern Roman Byzantines. From the 11th to the 13th century, the Holy Roman Empire was a key nation in the Crusades, which began as military expeditions to the Holy Land against the growing Seljuk Turk Empire. In 1230, the German Teutonic Order of Knights annexed an area called Prussia in an attempt to eliminate the remnant pagans from Europe. Around the same time, German towns and villages were being settled in areas outside the empire into Poland and Hungary, leading to areas of high diversity and ethnic ambiguity. The best way to describe the Holy Roman Empire for the next few centuries is a very loosely united monarchy, with many smaller kingdoms and duchies with varying degrees of power and autonomy. The Oi, politics must have been a mess. And that's why royals married into each other. The German lawyer Martin Luther began a period of change in the Catholic Church, which became known as the Protestant Reformation, making Germany a key focus in the splitting of the church for a second time. This is something we teach in school. Time. I'm Two familiar with this. the empire rose to dominate the rest. Habsburg, Austria in the south and Brandenburg, Prussia in the north. These two kingdoms became intense rivals, fighting wars and annexing large amounts of territory outside the empire. Both kingdoms fared very badly during the Napoleonic Wars, and the Holy Roman Empire was teach. officially abolished by the French Empire, who came to influence much of Western Europe. The French Revolution began a decades-long rise in nationalism in Germany, and many of the people sought to unify into a single nation. By 1866, Prussia had become the dominant power after the Seven-Week War against- I mean, I have to, uh, when it said nationalism and people waving their flags, uh... It's different nowadays, I've heard. I'm not German, so I can't speak for Germans, but I made a video about Germany, geography, now Germany, and they mentioned something about national pride and waving flags and how that's not very common. ...against Austria and set up the Northern Germanic Confederation in the following year, mm. notably excluding their Austrian rivals. This became the German Empire just four years later, the first modern German nation-state. Germany was propelled to superpower status and even became involved in overseas colonization. Tensions were high in Europe, and many distrusted the new powerful nation that had just appeared. This led to so many alliances in Europe, since that's, nobody that's nothing new. <laughs> trusted anybody anymore, and each nation had to pick a side in case war broke out. And this preparation for war inevitably became its precursor. When the Slavic nationalist Gavrilo Princip assassinated the heir to the Austrian throne in 1914, war broke out in Europe between the Central Powers and the uh, Allies. Germany Ferdinand. ended up being a key aggressor in the war and was blamed for most of the atrocities committed during battle. Extremely harsh war reparations were imposed on the state and much of its territory was stripped in the Treaty of Versailles. This crippled the German economy and angst against the Allied powers led to the rise of National Socialism, with mm. Adolf Hitler, one of its main advocates, rising to power and the resentment held by the common people. Hitler became Chancellor in the year 1933, instituting radical reforms and imposing strict National Socialist ideals on the nation, which became known to the West as Nazi Germany. The regime was highly anti-Semitic and allied itself with fascist Italy and Imperial Japan to form the Axis powers of World War II. After a rapid expansion and then military decline, Nazi Germany was defeated and divided along the zones of occupation by Allied powers. 
West and East Germany continued as neighbors for the next few decades. I don't know if I should, but say what you want about this man, but he did well in such a short time uh, with his goals, obviously, in mind. Terrible for the rest of the world, but in such a short time, he did pretty well uh, achieving his vision. I'm, but I'm glad he failed, obviously, but yeah. And the Berlin Effective. Wall was erected around West Berlin to prevent defectors from the Communist East Germany. By 1990, the Communist East collapsed, being reunited with West Germany. The new German Republic is known for its high quality of living, exceptional engineering, and for playing a key role in rebuilding Europe, being one of the key founders of the European Union and the Eurozone. Man, I see this one. I made a history of Sweden and its Vikings. I really want to do that one. But I'm squeezing in part two in this video, so let's go. This episode is brought to you by Squarespace. And yes, that means that I've been That's setting up loud. my very own website. Using their super easy to use web design tools and templates, it's been an absolute blast. Use the offer code Sweeney or head to squarespace.com slash Sweeney for 10% off your brand new website. I've been to the Great Wall of China. The homeland of the heathen was once the far north. From the groves and forests to the streams and oceans, they lived in isolation from their kin for centuries. Out of necessity, the wisest and strongest among them ventured out, taking with them those brave enough to inhabit the central Europe. This is so cool! The animation and the music too. I mean, this is epic. European plateau. Their isolation had left them marked by their eyes the color of oceans and their hair made of liquid gold or the amber that the sea spat onto their shores. Looks like Vikings. In times of famine, they battled the marshes, the curse of troll skin, and the fly sent by Woden to punish dishonorable men. When the famines lifted, they fought with each other for soil and till, as well as the great Roman hegemony to the south. Some barbarians would trade with the empire, and some would wage war on the silver armored despots. The Romans, seeing the threat, would push further into the frontier beyond the Great Rhine River, which they called Germania. This is like a movie. Actually, I really want to say this. I did a reaction video on Rammstein and uh, their video Deutschland, and there were a lot of like historic references that I had no clue about. But I start remembering some of those in this video. It sort of like explains it. I know a lot of you guys want to see more music videos, but the copyright issues are, yeah. series. This is cool. As mentioned on this channel, the Germanic culture was founded in southern Scandinavia, where settlers from the Pontic Caspian Steppe and the Caucasian Hey, we're brothers and sisters. Uh, we're family. Mountains had migrated. Central Europe at this time was dominated by other peoples, the largest of which were the Celts, who were being slowly conquered by the Romans from Italy. These Proto-Germans had strong cultural traditions. They had chieftains and governing assemblies called Thinga, where all free men would gather Is to- Is that why there are so many blondes in Germany? As in Scandinavia? Interpret the words of the law speaker on secular matters. Religious leaders held ceremonies and rituals, and they worshipped deities such as Woden, Donar, and others. We know these in English go. as Odin and Thor. Yeah. Proto-Germans had migrated out of Scandinavia around the 5th century BC in response to increased demand for farmland, since Scandinavia could not support the growing population. This will sound familiar to those who've... Not to think of it, our languages are very, very similar. That's because Swedish is part of the Germanic languages that tree. We've seen the episodes on Denmark and Sweden since the same would cause the Vikings to raid Europe over a millennia later. Mm. These Germanic tribes drove out or subsumed the Celts who already lived in the area between the Maas River in the Netherlands to the Vistula River in Poland. Julius Caesar viewed the Germanic barbarians as a threat to Italy and used this as well as other reasons to conquer Transalpine Gaul, 
in order to set up a borderland near the Rhine Valley. During the Gallic Wars, the Romans began their conquest of Germania on the west side of the Rhine River, which was incorporated into Roman Gaul, and then divided into two provinces in 85 AD, Germania Inferior and Superior, with the Romans founding the cities of Cologne and Mainz as imperial capitals. The lands east of the Rhine were called... I did not know that. That Romans founded Köln and Mainz. Whoa, Germania learning. Magna, or Greater Germany. That I've heard of. Germania Magna was not one state, but rather several undeveloped tribal confederations who traded with the Romans at Limes Germania, as well as the Proto-Slavic and Eastern Baltic cultures. They referred to themselves by these tribal names, but also on some occasions as Theudisk, meaning people, which would eventually form the modern words Teutons and Deutsch, meaning German. From 12 BC to 6 AD, the Roman might came crashing down on Germania Magna, conquering all the way to the Elba River under the reign of Augustus. However, a general named Arminius, a German prince captured and raised by the Romans, betrayed the Roman armies and led an ambush of the legions in Teutonberg Forest, forcing a retreat back to the Rhine River. Never again would the Romans rule Germania Magna after one of the worst defeats in Roman history. Overall, the Germans had mostly a trade and mercenary-based relationship with the Romans, and many Germans even settled in the empire. But with their growing populations, they became ever more powerful, and raids on the empire became... I, I just have to ask, so are there a lot of, in Germany, like Roman, uh, I wish, Kvaleva, I wish I was better at English, buildings and uh, uh, archaeology things, like, can you see traces of the Roman Empire in Germany? Please explain. More and more common. Just as the Roman frontier was weakening, a huge scale migration of Goths was happening. From their homeland in Sweden, to the Vistula of Poland, and then to Crimea, and many Goths became pirates on the Black Sea. The Goths were a ferocious and powerful tribe, and many other groups such as the Vandals, Burgundians, Alemanni, and Macromanni pushed further into Rome to escape the Goths in the north and east. Rome struggled for many years against these tribes, barely managing to hold back the Chatti, Chauci, and the Macromani. The Goths then split into two factions, the Ostrogoths and the Visigoths. However, real large-scale invasions would be triggered by yet another force. The Mongols? The Huns, probably cousins oh, the Huns. of the Xiongnu, invaded Europe in 373 like wildfire, destroying everything in their path. They subjugated the Ostrogoths and harassed the other Germans and Romans alike. Soon other Germanic tribes pushed into the weak heart of Rome while fleeing from Attila and his powerful armies. The Visigoths would sack and plunder Rome under King Alaric in 455, before eventually conquering and settling in Spain. The Vandals conquered a kingdom in northern Africa and Carthage, and also sacked Rome when a political marriage betrothal was broken by Rome. The sack of the city was so wanton that vandalism came to be the word for wholesale destruction in the Latin language. The Ostrogoths revolted against the Hunnic Empire and once it collapsed also eventually conquered parts of the Adriatic coastline before settling in the Kingdom of Italy. The rest of Rome was now ripe for the picking. The Burgundians negotiated a kingdom for themselves northwest of Italy, part of the Suebi Confederation conquered the west of Spain while the rest settled north of the Burgundians under the name Alemanni. The Franks took the lowlands. How will, how will I ever remember all of this? So much information. And the Angles, Saxons and Utes, together with their cousins the Frisians, took Britannia, forming best, the basis of modern of. England. The whole of the Western Roman Empire had fallen to Germanic tribes, and several kingdoms were now where her provinces had once stood. Germania Magna was, however, still wild and barbaric, with little in the way of the institutions and infrastructure in the Roman South. The Saxons, Thuringians, and Lombards. Oh, still wait, wait, he said the word. A lot of Roman infra infrastructure. Is there any left? Like, can you actually see traces of it in Germany? That's what I wanted to say. Tribal life in the mostly undeveloped land. That is, until an unlikely new power arose in the ashes of Roman Gaul. Franks. 
I recently took this channel full time and in doing so I decided to revisit some of my older episodes to take a more serious and in-depth look at their history. Doing a series on Germany has been on the top of that list for a while and so you can expect the same to happen with other videos in due time. Cool. In addition, I've also been building a website to act as a portfolio for my work as a sort of digital resume. I really want to see this one, History of Sweden. Oh, and China too. The whole process was made so early. Yo, I've actually been to all of these countries. <laughs> so much easier by Squarespace. You can check out my website in the link below, which I built using Squarespace's immensely easy to use drag and drop tools and templates to make any website look absolutely stunning. Having your own space online is essential for any business, but also are great for personal use, including use as a working space for a project or hobby, or even to help plan and remember special events like weddings. It's perfect for beginners and for advanced users, there is even the option to tinker with the coding. Now, Squarespace is offering a free trial at squarespace.com Sweeney and a 10% discount on your brand new website by using the offer code Sweeney at checkout. Cool. That's S-U-I-B-H-N-E to make your idea a reality. Please check it out and get building today. That's Thank you so cool. much to the patrons for supporting this channel. If you'd like to show your support, you can find a link to my Patreon page down below. Like and subscribe, and I will see you next time. Denmark. This was such a good way to tell history. I'm really fascinated by the China one too, and Japan, like Eastern Asian. That's really fascinating. That's cool history as well with emperors and their warriors, samurais. And that's really cool. You know what? I made this channel just for fun, but I'm actually learning. I'm learning a lot. I just saw it as a hobby, something to do in my spare time. But I think I know more now than I did before I made my channel. And that's pretty cool. Knowledge is cool. I know school may suck, but knowledge is cool. You just have to find your way of learning it. We're all different. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to make me the coolest teacher in school, you can subscribe. Anyways, take care and bye-bye.